Thank you, Minister. <coughs> Sri Janardhan Swami. Yeah. Then I may be permitted to speak from here? Yes, please. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, sir, my name is Janardhan Swami and I represent the Chitruga Lok Sabha constituency in the state of Karnataka. Thank you and uh, thanks to my party for giving me an opportunity to initiate a discussion on the National Institutes of Technology Amendment Bill 2010. First of all, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to the Honorable Minister, who is trying his best to improve the present given situation. However, I would like to share some of my observations with the hope that the Honorable Minister considers them seriously. At present, there are 20 National Institutes of Technology which are governed by the National Institutes of Technology Act 2007. The proposed bill amends the National Institutes of Technology Act 2007 to declare certain institutions of technology as institutions of national importance. Before we go further, the names Indian Institute of Technology and the National Institute of Technology are fundamentally very confusing. When we say national, are we not referring to India in this country? The word national and India are inter interchangeable in most common use. Thus, the minister must demonstrate his commitments to aid the modest students and their parents by correcting this confusion. By saying this as an error that was done long back can only be an excuse to carry this further by doing the least. The Honorable Minister must use his position and the opportunity for correcting this than letting this confusion slide further into the future. Next, the newly established five Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, which Honorable Minister mentioned, are, Kol uh, are at Kolkata, Pune, Mohali, Bhopal, and uh, Tiruvananthapuram to be declared as institutions of national importance. I must say this is terribly confusing to call these five, five newly established uh, institutions as Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, while we already have the Indian Institute of Science at Bangalore. Aren't they different? If they are different, why call them with similar names? Further, by calling the new institutes as Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research would have the danger of implying that there is no education and research in the present Indian Institute of Science at Bangalore. We should pay attention to these preventable errors. The vision of these institutes is said to be the creation of institutes of the highest caliber in which teaching and Education in the basic senses will be totally integrated with the state-of-the-art research. However, nowhere in the bill it is clear to me on how we are going to accomplish that. It is, is it because uh, we have already accomplished this in other similar institutes and we just want to replicate this in these new institutes? Or is it because we have not accomplished this with other similar institutes and we are trying it out here? Kindly clarify. This is an important bill. It demonstrates the importance of R&D sector in our country. As I mentioned during the debate on uh, the Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research Bill 2010, uh, 2010 on 24th March 2011, we must also care for the quality of the education at the lower levels as they are the feeding channels for the higher education and the R&D without which our ability at the higher levels will be highly limited. In a broader sense, we must change our education system entirely. Even in the places like IITs, NITs, IIC, engineering, medical and other colleges, we are producing graduates who will just read, remember and reproduce for the sake of exams without really making them understand what they really study. In a way, we are turning them to be kind of memorizing devices who will vaguely remember what they study than thinking individuals who will apply their learning and knowledge in their real life applications. Arguably, most of our engineers today, it could be engineers, doctors, PhDs, coming out of our institutions, are understanding as little as 10% or even less of what they study. You can imagine what to expect from someone with 90% gap in their understanding of what they are educated in. As a result, we have turned our institutions 
as certificate printing factories. It is a serious waste of public money and a valuable time of our students and significantly compromises our ability to compete in the global environment. When it comes to the funding, the present total funding outlay for the five new Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research is about 2,000 crores. In contrast, the foreign institutes may spend as much as tens of thousands of crores putting our institutions at a highly disadvantaged situation when it comes to compete with the foreign institutes on infrastructure, laboratory, communication, computing, and so on. We should consider increasing the budget to these institutions further. I agree with our several distinguished members here that we don't really need to follow any particular country's model. Having worked in the United States and other countries for more than a decade prior to contesting in the Lok Sabha election, I think there are few good things in every country's model if you know how to spot them. We should explore, learn, debate, understand, and adapt these items as suitable in our situation. I think there is always a good return for the country when it comes to investing in the education. I propose we take this opportunity to lead others, other countries, by invent, investing more in the quality and affordable education to every children and youth of this country, thereby setting our own standard for others to follow. Presently, the situation at most of the old and new national institutes of technology is so bad that there is no full-time director in some institutes. For example, National Institute of Technology, Calicut, has been without a full-time director since October 2010. No promotions or other benefits since the board meeting is pending for at, in the past nine months. It is also said that more than 200 vacancies have not been filled. Therefore, just calling these institutions as institutions of national importance is not a great step forward unless we fund them properly, staff them adequately, and challenge them to produce the world-class results, thereby making India a true leader in the science and technology in the coming years. Because we must not forget the clear link between the strong economy and the R&D, and the clear link between useful R&D and the quality education for our country. Thank you again for providing me with okay. an opportunity for initiating this discussion on this bill. Thank you. Thank you I hope much. several distinguished members here in this August shows mm. will have more to add. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you very much. Sri